This podcast is brought to you by Uconnect, the creator of the first all-in-one virtual career center. Scale your impact and engage more students with a platform that puts all of your career resources in one place. Hey friends, welcome back to the Career Everywhere podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Metzger, and this week I'm excited to welcome Adam Capozzi, the Director of Career Services, Assessment, and Student Success at Syracuse University. In this episode, I talk with Adam about how to implement Career Everywhere in a decentralized career services model. Adam shares what Syracuse's decentralized model looks like and why it's set up that way, how all the career centers across campus stay connected, how they're using technology to support their collective engagement goals, and more. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for being here, Adam. Thank you, Meredith. I do appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you. And I've been looking forward to talking with you today about what Career Everywhere looks like in a decentralized model. I know you all have kind of an interesting career service to set up there at Syracuse, and I'm excited to dig into that with you. I'm happy to share, and you've had a great roster of individuals within our profession that have been speaking with you up to this point. So it is a true honor to be participating alongside them. Yeah, I'm excited to add you to that roster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before I get into my questions, Adam, is there anything else you'd like to add about yourself, your background, or your role there at Syracuse? Sure. I kind of come from a very untraditional route of getting to where I am right now. I graduated undergrad in 2008. And as many of us know, 2008 was not the best time to be going into the workforce. <laughs> but I was very fortunate to jump into a profession in the marketing advertising communications world that kind of set me down a path of feeling more prepared for what was going to be out there in my next steps of my professional life. And I jumped into uh, higher education in general with not really knowing what my uh, long-term goals were and navigating from admissions work to career services, finally finding my niche. It's been great learning not only within the confines of two separate institutions, but as I mentioned, the great roster of people that you've been speaking with, kind of tapping into those people as uh, guides and mentors through this process, especially in this role that I have here at Syracuse. Yeah, I always love hearing how people come to be in career services because there's not it's not like there's a degree no. for career services. Like everyone comes from a totally different background. So thank you for sharing that. No linear path whatsoever. No, no, not at all. <laughs> but I think that's why it's such an interesting field and so many yeah. interesting people gravitate to it. Very much so. Yeah. Okay. Well, before I get into my like more specific questions about our topic today, I would love to kick us off with a question I ask all of our guests, and that's, what does career everywhere mean to you? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I've been watching a lot of your podcasts and see, hearing what other folks are saying, and it's kind of following a similar path. And really, to me, it boils down to successful education or engagement that ultimately leads to continued conversations that really highlight what career services is, what we do, how we can be a facilitator in all areas of our campus community. So I, I like to use examples for our experience here at Syracuse. Like we get connected with our admissions team to assist them in ushering in the next wave of students, participating and helping out with new student movement processes, carrying that over to working with our new student uh, programs department, faculty on workshops that really showcase how career services are committed to a student's success in and outside of the classroom from that moment they step on campus. And really, if we're able to make that positive first impression, it's going to put us in a situation and be portrayed by our partners. It's not only a career resource center, but as an overall guidance group to our campus at large that can really assist one another in creating deeper connections between academic pathways, meaningful career development, and ultimately lead to aiding the personal, social, and professional aspects that our students this generation specifically are finding is true indicators for creating a community and belonging. Yeah, I love that. I just, I love that concept of career everywhere where it's like, it takes a village, right? It takes a village to help a student be successful. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, now I would love to dig into our topic today, which again is what career everywhere looks like in a decentralized model. So to give us some context, can you just tell me more about how career services is set up there at Syracuse and what that decentralized model looks like? Yeah, it's decentralized distributed career models are, are not foreign to our industry. I think we are a little bit unique still within that vein. 
right now as of spring 2023, uh, well, 2024 now, wow, I'm still thinking <laughs> we're in 2023. <laughs> this central office really that I oversee, we have eight full-time staff members, one practicum student and four student workers. And that's just the starting point. And then when you look across our campus, we have 12 individual school college-based career centers, as well as specialized units that work with designated student populations like student-athletes, our veterans community, as well as students participating in part-time programs. So everyone is going to be a little bit unique in their nature. The size of these departments, uh, it's kind of run the gambit in overall size. This can range based on the sheer volume of students currently enrolled at the schools and colleges or even based on their individual models based on what their leadership groups are looking for. I like to use our College of Arts and Sciences makeup, which is very unique. They're a very large liberal arts school within our great university setting, and they have a blended model of career services and academic advising meshing to one another within one specific unit. So overall, we have right now in about the mid-50s of career-focused staff members on our campus currently feeding into this overall distributed decentralized model. Okay. So each college and school kind of has their own career center or their own career services team? Very much so. And we went to this really just, to, I know we're going to talk a little bit about why it's set up this way. And Really, when I came to Syracuse University in 2014, we did have a traditional central career model setup, and we only had a few of our professional schools having dedicated teams. I began my tenure over at the business school before transitioning to our central office in late 2018 to help with the transitioning our campus-wide model to this current makeup of distribute uh, career everywhere. We kicked it off in fall of 18, and this essentially was rolled out to be really better preparing our students for what's currently going on in industry, as well as preparing them from the moment they walk on campus to them feeling fulfilled in that going into their first career, whether it is an internship, post-graduation, full-time opportunity, even continuing education, military service, or volunteer work. Okay. Yeah, I could see how it would be helpful for each school to kind of have a specialized team that specializes in the career pathways and the majors that are based in that school. Yeah, and we spent a great deal of the 2017-2018 academic year setting ourselves in motion for that summer of 18, fall uh, 2018 kickoff, where we initially focused on streamlining what our central office was going to end up focusing on and uh, shifting staff members, because that group was about in its early to mid-20s of total staff count in our central office, and starts to transition them over into our schools and colleges, and or either creating or increasing externally the overall headcount of those units. And this really showed us, uh, allow us to transition from a more, as you said, generalized to a specialized approach for career education, starting in year one, the moment they step on campus, so students have access to really targeted resources that align with not only just their course of study, but as well as access to customized programming, experiential learning, direct staff partnerships with academic advising offices, and really dedicated job support tactics. Right now, with this all taking shape, it's great for our central team. Because now we've been able to really focus our efforts on collaborating with these individual units to administer initiatives that bring our campus community together. So career everywhere mindset. Um, examples of this right now that we're really honing in on is overall data collection, assessment for external publications, managing career and job search technology, hosting large-scale programs both on and off campus. So that can be anything from career fairs to career explorational programming in different geographic locations. And working with our undecided student population, I think that's a piece that sometimes always kind of gets not lost in the shuffle, but not really talked about to its fullest extent, because we do have so many students that come to Syracuse University that are still unsure of what they really want to be doing. And if their major, minor, and discipline is really going to correlate with not only their time here at SU, but for what their goals will be post time of commencement. And uh, I would say one of the big things that I've been the biggest fan of since transitioning to our central office and overseeing it is we're the main arm of administering experiential learning funds for our students seeking financial support during their internship search process. Okay. Yeah, that kind of transitions into a follow-up question I had is, if there are these career centers for each individual school and 
college. Like that makes sense. They help those students. Mm -hmm. What does the central office do? Like what do you all oversee? I like to say, if uh, think of us as your general practitioner. Uh, if you're going to the doctor's office to be meeting with your general practitioner to figure out what's exactly going on with you, they're going to give you some great recommendations, but they're also going to probably provide you a pathway to meeting with a specialist to help with aiding you get to be 100%. So we are that generalist and the schools and colleges are the specialists. But that doesn't mean my team is not able to be there from a career education standpoint to allow students to understand what's exactly at play for them during their time here at Syracuse University. I have two phenomenal career exploration specialists that are really jack of all trades. They work with students from year one through year four of the simplest of creating resume, getting your online brand presence uh, situated with LinkedIn, cover letter support to full gambit of offer negotiations, setting you up and trying to make you feel comfortable of connecting with a specific alumni club association if you're moving to a specific area. So we do that from the career education side, but from the external relations piece, employer engagement is extremely important. A lot of our schools and college career offices do not have a designated employer relations person. I am very lucky to have two individuals that sit on that side of the house. They review a lot of what's going on in the industry, assist our campus offices in understanding different trends, knowing what's going to be happening both on and off campus from an info session, workshop base, to make recommendations as well as like we're seeing these organizations heavily looking at entry-level talent within your specific area from a school or college and your students' interests. So let's start conversations with them. We are also the data hub for campus. We do a lot of the assessment from the career side that reports out to not only the senior leaders at the schools and colleges, but all the way up through the chancellor's office. So we're assessing everything from career outcomes to individual assessment of appointments, workshops, events, looking if we need to actually alter our approach and our communication strategy. So we do a little bit of everything. And I like to say we are really customized relationship managers for our entire career service network here on campus. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like that keeps it really interesting that you do a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> okay. Well, now I would love to kind of dig into why you're all set up this way. Like, why did you all decide to move to a decentralized career services model? Yeah, so we were looking at the evolution of students and how they are really getting the support from the moment they engage with Syracuse University from an outside of the classroom perspective to getting ready to be going into the real work world. And yes, we were doing our best, but we knew we could do better. So we started to benchmark off of other R1 research institutions, peers, that we saw that were doing it right. And we decided it was about time to be switching our mind. Allowing students within not our professional schools, but our other outfits on campus to have the same aspects of having an office dedicated in their home school and college that they could walk right into, set up an appointment with, meet with, understand how to really be bridging that in-class experience with the real-world application based on what they're hearing from the faculty, either coursework or group conversations, and parlaying that into a potential job search strategy. Not all psychology majors are going to be psychologists. I always say that. They're going to be great communicators. They are going to be individuals that could potentially go into PR firms, working government agencies. So why having, by having a specialized career unit within that school and college, they can talk about the different career pathways that are associated that this major minor discipline can go after. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, like we were talking about earlier, there's so many different career pathways that are possible with each major and it. I imagine it would be helpful to have someone who specializes in those career pathways for those specific majors to help you give just a little bit more personalization there. Definitely. Okay. So with so many career centers across campus, how do you all stay connected to each other and kind of work together? That is the great question where my <laughs> team does an amazing job. I have to give credit to every single member of my group. So when we kicked off this redistributed decentralized model, it, it was the fall of 18. So the, we had the 18, 19 academic year. We had fall of 19. And then we all know what happened in spring of 2020, the pandemic hit. So we transitioned virtual and we were all doing our best to make sure students felt supported, seen, heard, and given the true support as best as possible to allow them to be successful. 
But as we started to transition back to campus in the fall of 21 in its truest nature, we did a deep dive into assessing, is this work really set up for success? Are we communicating from a centralized standpoint to our schools and colleges and working together in a way that's really putting our students first? So this was really great. So that fall 21 was a lot of roundtable conversations, um, a lot of discovery work that I did with senior leadership within the Division of the Student Experience, which our office sits within. And we then created what's called our Syracuse University Career Council, which started in the spring of 2022. And that was bringing together the heads of all the career services office, as well as senior administrators within the schools and colleges and units to the table on a real frequent basis. We started off with once a month conversations and now that's matured into twice a semester due to how much success we've had. But we started to examine where we could be doing better, how we can be working with one another and really figuring out the best path forward. So that's been it really one of the big start, starting linchpins for us of working collaboratively, sharing ideas, keeping each other up to date. This also then matured into the, our Summer Career Summit series, which we launched in the summer of 2022. And that was actually a brainchild of a fantastic staff member I have on my team, Christopher Maldonado, which really focused on our technology platforms. How are we using them to our fullest advantage when engaging with students as well as external parties? So we turned this summit into a day of learning and training throughout summer of 2022 to great success. We did pre-summit surveys, post-summit surveys to see what proficiencies were being improved upon, areas that we could identify that we really need to be working on from a training aspect outside of just this day of learning. So we saw great success in our platforms going forward after summer 22 being utilized and our students being more understanding of what they're supposed to really be doing. We matured that into the summer of 2023, which focused a real relaunch and reimagining of our career services network that we call it here on campus, which essentially is providing opportunities for our campus. So as I mentioned, 50 plus career focused staff members to participate in monthly working groups dedicated to their area of focus. So we created three working groups that meet annually now. We have our directors group, which is the head of all the career offices, talking about big picture initiatives, what's going on within our areas, what should we be aware of, forecasting future trends within industry, what are other institutions doing that we potentially want to start looking at. Then we have our internal working group, which is all student-based individuals. So a lot of career counselors, assistant director of, of advising, and they get together to talk about best practices with student appointments. What can we be doing to change our appointment types and handshake? Should we be creating new career guides? What are you doing in your area that I could potentially utilize within my area to make sure my students feel more seen and more heard? And then our other group is our external relations group, which is our non-student facing individuals, which are employer relations, operations, data and assessment folks. And it's coming to the table and talking about what are we doing to portray ourselves as a one university setting when we engage with our employers. And all of this is a work in progress. We're not going to easily be able to flip the switch overnight, but we've seen such great movement over the last several months since this event instituted, that we've seen a high increase in overall collaboration on our programs and initiatives. And when you break the data down even further, we're seeing more cross-pollination of students from schools and colleges participating in other schools and colleges events and programs. Okay, that's really cool. You guys do a lot to stay connected. <laughs> yes, we have not only email communications, we have Teams channels, we have constant email threads uh, outside of just the traditional, like, this is what's going on in our career service network. We have people checking in on one another. Oh, I need staff to volunteer for this event. Oh, I'll jump in. I'll sign up. So the Google Sheet gets sent over. It's been fascinating to see it evolve. Yeah, that's great. I feel like so often it's easy for departments to get really siloed in between the different colleges. And it sounds like you all have figured out a way to kind of break down those walls and just work together across campus. That's great. Yeah, we do our best to make sure that no barriers are set up so students, as well as the individual teams, feel like they're on their own little island. But it's always a work in progress. We always got to make sure that 
while relationship and our conversations are heading in the right direction, we have to do those consistent touch points. So like, are, are we staying on path? Do we need to pivot? Do we need to alter? And being very open and honest with one another has been something that we've been really trying to improve upon great meal the last several months to last year. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. I'm curious in these like annual all team summits that you do, you mentioned you do like, what is it? A full day of programming? Yeah. Right. Okay. So what are, what are some of the topics you all cover? I'm just curious. Yeah. So that first one in 2022, we gave all of our technology platforms. We either got a peer pro on campus to talk about the technology and how they use it, or we were able to get one of our vendor partners to come in person or virtually join us to walk us through product updates, what they are seeing that's best in terms of how to be engaging students or external partners with the system forecasting of what they plan on changing to better help assist our work on a day-to-day basis. And then summer of 23, we turned this into a very unique setup. We spent the morning doing a peer pro session where we chose three schools and colleges on three separate topics, things that they're really excited or big achievements that they had throughout the academic year and allow Q&A to happen with the group that was uh, participating to say like, oh, that's awesome. I want to do this. How can I go about it? So we had our architecture school talk about their uh, portfolio days and the way they work between the employers as well as the students. We had our technology school talk about their amazing efforts within our first destination survey. They had record high numbers and overall knowledge rate and positive career outcomes and massive increases in average starting salary. So they kind of give a peek behind the curtain of how they break down uh, their discussions with students to feel comfortable for sharing this information, which was great to see. And then we had our business school talk about their utilization, of social media, specifically LinkedIn, to highlight all their work and how they were seeing a return on investment from students engaging with it to set up appointments and or attend events post them uh, putting up all the content. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a, yeah. it's a good variety of programming there. Hey friend, if you're enjoying this podcast, I think you'd really like the Career Everywhere newsletter. Every Thursday, we'll hit your inbox with Career Everywhere related articles, videos, podcast episodes, and more. Our goal is to share best practices and strategies directly from the innovative career leaders implementing them every day. Join over 1,000 other career leaders and subscribe today at careereverywhere.com slash subscribe. Yeah, and then we mixed in some stuff. We had some external peer pros. We had fantastic guest speakers from two different institutions that came in and talked a little bit about their work on their campuses. Then we had our vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion talk about synergies between the work that she's doing in her department and the way that we engage with students. And uh, then we spent the rest of the day kind of in sessions, breaking out into those three groups that I mentioned, the directors, the internal group, the external group, to talk about what are our goals for the upcoming year, or how can we set the path towards positive traction in the areas that we're focusing on over the next 12 months. Okay, very cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. So, you know, as we all know, it's not only is it important to engage students, but it's also important to engage faculty, staff, alumni, employers, all those good folks. So I'm curious, how do you all work together to engage those other stakeholders? Yeah, from the central standpoint, a couple areas that we've really focused on over the last year or so is uh, one, creating a campus career workshop request form that is live right on our website. And we see a lot of interest from our student organizations, as well as faculty looking to submit forms on having career services visit their class and or one of their group sessions that do one of several topics that we lay out in this form. We usually have a quick turnaround if a student or a group or a professor submits it on a Monday. We're usually in conversations with them two days later and getting something on the books within that month fitting around the schedule. So that's been great to see. We've really focused as well as on creating campus partner informational packets around career services what we do, the services that we provide, the technologies that are accessible to all students, staff, and faculty, as well as important information on our first destination survey. Digital signage in highly trafficked areas around campus, and that goes towards our student centers, our barn center, which is our health and wellness area, 
within our libraries to showcase all the events, the programs that we're doing uh, with QR codes associated with it. And you'd be surprised how many people are actually looking at that and engaging with that because we do live in the digital age. Even <laughs> our, our staff is taking uh, note of that as well as the faculty. This has also led to networking and employer engagement opportunities. So some that we've been really proud of over the last uh, calendar year is our work with 119 Euclid, which is a space dedicated to supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion for students of color. We've done specialized networking events with them, etiquette experiences. We also did a, a really cool program during Career Week this past year that talked about identity and culture in the workplace that led right into our career fair later that day. And we had some phenomenal employer partners come in and talk a little bit about what that means to themselves, as well as their organization and areas that they're really trying to focus on to better both the internship experience as well as the early entry career development of a person coming to work for their company. Same thing can be said with our LGBTQ Resource Center, Disability Cultural Center. We're in active conversations of exploring ways that we can better engage their student populations. On top of that, our first year seminar, Syracuse University is very unique. Several years ago, I guess not unique in the sense that other institutions are doing this, but I believe it was the 2018 academic year. We put together as a university a 15-week one-credit course that engages all first-year students and transfer students in guided conversations, experiential activities, written assignments, all about transitioning to Syracuse University in general. So that's campus life, exploring their identities as they situate themselves in new contexts, understanding how they relate to or interact with other students, faculty or staff, and or even contributing to being welcomed to that inclusion and diversity aspect of campus. We partner with them to get one or two sessions within that 15 weeks where we come and talk to them about the importance of career services, how it's part of the everlasting effect of their time here. We, we're kind of a heartbeat behind the scenes, and we've seen a lot of that maturing in the students that take part in these seminars to actually having appointments not only in our office, but making recommendation services and appointments to their schools and colleges. And that kind of leads uh, a little bit to like the campus-wide perspective. As I said, faculty can be submitting these forms that get us to be busy in the classroom, but we provide this area where they can say specifically what they're seeking, and we then make the recommendations. Like, hey, you're asking for a specific topic or a discussion point. Central is more than happy to help, but do you realize that you have your own career office within your school and college that can really be more specialized in this approach? And that facilitates additional conversations that they may have not had up to that point in time. So which is that's been great to see. And uh, career services, specifically in course invites, outside of that, we run a lot of programs that the faculty will just stumble upon. And they're like, okay, can you do that for my classroom next week? And we're like, sure, we'll come right in. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I, I love how you all just support each other. Yeah. We do our best because we are <laughs> one major large institution. So we, we don't leave any stone unturned. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good strategy for sure. You got a lot yeah. of students to support. <laughs> yeah. So on that note of scale, how are you all using technology to kind of support your collective engagement goals? Yeah. Well, we are talking today. So you connect first and foremost. We're, we're proud to say we just launched our, our brand new 24-7 career hub and we've seen some great traction with building out our community space around our schools and colleges. And we know that's just the start with utilizing the system to our advantage. Handshake, handshake resources, everything that comes with that platform, we're really diving into that as much as we possibly can. We work very strategically with our client relationship manager. She's absolutely fantastic. And using the, the resource section to use templates, recommending guides for our students as well as staff to be tapping into. Social media. Instagram. This generation loves the clickable, scrolling nature of social media and yep. being able to capture content. So we put a high emphasis as well as our campus partners on trying to be as live and active on it as possible. So that's daily stories, posts. Got to give credit to one of our schools and colleges, our College of Visual and Performing Arts. They do a great first destination survey Fridays through their Instagram streams, which is highlighting students that are completing their surveys. And it's really shown them like, hey, this is what is going on out there. 
let's get you doing the same exact thing as they engage with students, let's promote your successes. And they've seen major jumps in their overall engagement scores because of that. We also make some unique aspects of part of students participating in events. So like handshake profile completion as part of the student experience application. So we run a great deal of immersion programs, which is bringing students not just locally and regionally, but to New York City, Boston, D.C., Atlanta. And they can't apply for these programs or be considered until their handshake profile is completed. Or if they need to be receiving funding assistance to be doing these opportunities, same thing. LinkedIn's a big player for us. We run several what we call LinkedIn Live programs across our campus each year. And we have fantastic alumni from that organization that are going to give their time and talent to come to the university two to three times throughout the course of the year and do everything from classroom visits, small group conversations, one-on-one discussions, talking about brand presence and the importance of making sure your online profile matches how you're portraying yourself on your resume, doing everything from the alumni networking tool, connecting with organizations, recommendations on blog posts that they can be associating. So there's a lot that goes into that. From a professional development technology standpoint, besides the obvious of utilizing tools to really support student professional development goals like VMOC, we are a VMOC school for resume building We also attempt to always engage to bring folks back to Handshake, as I keep on mentioning, for all other resources and really vice versa. For an example on that, like direct from VMOC emails periodically go out to our students to remind them to update their resumes before attending a career fair or applying for a specific opportunity that we're highlighting. But then also encourage our career advisors to engage by redirecting students back to creating new appointments in Handshake once they receive these emails. Okay. Yeah, sounds like you're using a wide variety of technologies there at Syracuse. And I kind of want to dig into, unsurprisingly, like your new career hub on the Uconnect platform. I've looked at it, but for those who are watching or listening, can you just kind of walk us through how you set that up considering your decentralized model? Yeah, not surprising. We wanted to put our schools and colleges at the forefront. We wanted to make sure that when you Google Syracuse University Career Services, you're going to be generated right to a page that's showcasing all the benefits and all the opportunities that are at a student's fingertips. Now, in our previous setup, you had to do a lot of layers, clicking, going to several pages to be finding, if I'm this student, this is who I should be speaking with. Now, it's going to be right at your fingertips from the moment you click on the page. It says, find your career center. We have ourselves listed in there, but we have all of our schools and colleges technically situated as their own communities. Then within the schools and colleges pages, we have learn more aspects, dedicated content from blog posts, information on programs and events, uh, labor job market insights, data optimization is going to be coming into play in the near future. But really what the students should be worrying about and or thinking about, not just today, but over the next several weeks, because a lot of times, honestly, out of mind, Students will see something right there and like, oh, we'll sign up for that in three weeks. No, we want you to be looking at it right now so you can be active in participating and secure your spot. So we've seen very positive initial reactions from our schools and colleges of evolution of the site and what's being done for themselves. But we have so much now capabilities of tying all of our technologies together under one central hub. And we never had that before. So we're using this right now to tie in the handshakes, the VMOTs, the big interviews, the going globals of the world all into one space where our students now can have access to it in one single scroll. They don't need to be going to several different websites to be finding all the same content. So as much as we can keep them in the site, keep them engaged, it's going to allow us to be looking at the data, be looking at the metrics, see what pages are actually succeeding right now. So we can actually tap into be putting more content or really pushing that further into email communications or using the email threads through the system to help better engage with them or look at them from the standpoint of, are these pages not getting the same clicks and visibility? So what can we be doing to alter it so more students are visiting them? The employer piece, we have additionally more content on there to be highlighting how they can really be working with our Syracuse University Career Services Network. And I love the aspect that we can tie into other departments, other areas of our campus. We've used this time today to talk about faculty engagement, 
But we do so much more outside of the faculty engagement. We work with different departments from the staff perspective, whether it's our student engagement office, our registered student organizations, affinity groups. They're all going to be able to be able to find their own content right there. And we do a great deal of work with our alumni association. So our alumni being able to come back to the page or our office of alumni engagement and looking at it and seeing like all the important content that they should be aware of things that could potentially generate ideas for partnerships and collaboration. It's been great. We were one month into it. We just had on our one month call with our relationship manager, who is amazing. We couldn't be more thankful for her. And just looking at the data, like we've never been able to before is something that's really setting us up for success for the future. Yeah, that's obviously great to hear for us here at Uconnect. But that I think it's just so cool how you you all set up that site to really as you said, be like the central one-stop shop hub yeah. for all things career services for Syracuse, regardless of what college you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, people probably aren't Googling College of Arts and Sciences career services. They're Googling Syracuse career services. And now there's this one location to find everything they need. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. I'm excited to continue to follow along with your story and, and see how folks continue to receive it there at Syracuse. We're excited. There's, a, as I said, a lot of positive traction and conversations going on. And I know this is only going to be the start. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So Adam, you've already like offered a lot of great advice, but I'm curious, is there any other parting words of wisdom, other advice that you would want to give to other career services leaders who are trying to implement career everywhere in this distributed decentralized model? Yeah, I, I would say now more than ever, we really got to be aware of the evolution of the current student population and how we need to evolve with them. Just in the last several years, even before the pandemic, the needs, the wants, the areas where we really need to be assisting them has drastically changed from my time as an undergraduate student eons ago. So knowing that how we need to change our methodology and advising, as well as the types of events and programs that we're running, that's going to be my first thing, just making sure you're keeping an eye on industry trends, but doing maybe even conversations with student workers or sending out surveys to your campus to be figuring out what are you seeing or what are you not seeing? What do you want us to be doing to really help set you up for success? Information sharing at the highest level is probably another important piece that I always like to say, and that's not just with students, but that's all areas of your campus community. You might have a very strong relationship with one department and or one faculty subset, but you need to do that for everyone. So it's over communicating in some instances, that additional visibility through those visual signs, as I mentioned, but making sure that you are deliberately pushing out the content in, in, a, in a manner that is not overbearing, but consistent. And if you don't have a dedicated marketing person associated with your team or office, like we do not have a dedicated marketing and communications person, it's extremely important to create a strong working relationship with your university's college marketing communications teams. They've been fantastic uh, collaborators and not only helping us get our brand new site up and going from the internal side, but helping us with trying to cater towards those new graphics. What are students really taking time to be looking at? from the social channels or from the visual board standpoint, really giving us a better understanding of like, hey, this is going to be working with one area of our campus, such as our health and wellness area, and we're seeing positive returns on investment. Let's potentially try that and coming together, seeing what works, being open to us of what potentially needs to be altered. So that's something I definitely recommend. Yeah, solid advice all around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I do want to be mindful of our time here. So Adam, is there anything else you would like to add that we haven't covered? Uh, no, I would say if any school and college is looking to be moving to a decentralized model or is in the process of that evolution, patience is key. I always say creating those customized relationships with the schools and college career offices is probably one of the most long-standing pieces of my work that I do here in Central Career Services. You need to really be curious to understand the needs of the schools and colleges and their goals for student engagement, because one aspect of recommendations for a part of our campus is not always going to work for another. So that patience, curiosity, and just making sure that you're doing your best to be a good collaborator and communicate. Yeah, that's just the kind of the key to any good relationship, right? Yeah. Communication, partnership, collaboration. <laughs> totally. 
Okay. Well, if people would like to connect with you or learn more from you, where's a good place for them to do that? Always love to connect with individuals on LinkedIn, email as well. My email is associated with my LinkedIn profile. It can also be found right on our brand new website underneath the team. So don't feel uh, you can't reach out. I'm always looking for new connections. Great. And for those watching or listening, I'll be sure to include a link to Adam's LinkedIn profile and his email in the show notes. So you can check that out. All right. So Adam, at the end of every interview, I like to do this answer a question, leave a question thing. So I'll ask you a question our last guest left for you, and then you will leave a question for the next guest. Perfect. So our last guest was Chris Entringer of Northeast Iowa Community College, and he left this question for you. To AI or not to AI, (laughs) what is your team doing with AI and career services or how are you using it? Yeah, that's a a million dollar question I feel right now. (laughs) I would say to AI, but in the sense of being... It utilizes a resource, but not as an overall guiding tool in all aspects of your work. I've talked to the staff members as well as campus colleagues. Where I'm using it right now and others is with email messaging and recommendations on email titles in your language that's really going to captivate our student audience. I just had a great conversation with a colleague at another institution where he used AI for a uh, creative email tagline and what it spit out actually provided them like a gigantic boost in overall student click rate on the messaging. So that's been unique. And I would say from my team and our campus community, we're overall kind of really dipping our toes into it still. It's evolving conversations amongst our cross-campus groups and how we can really and should be implementing it into our day-to-day work with students and employers as well as speaking towards it on the importance of students using it, as I said earlier, as more of a resource rather than an overall guiding tool um, to be getting the work done. Um, so long story short, I would say maybe check back a year from now and I might have a better <laughs> formalized answer for you with this. Yeah, I feel like we're all just trying to figure out what AI is, what chat GPT is, how do yeah. we use it, what's ethical. Like It's just a bunch of question marks right now. Yes, very much so. Okay. All right. Well, what question would you like to leave for the next guest? So I kind of want to make this a little fun and I want to see what the next guest has to say. If they had a time machine, would you travel to the future or back to the past? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Yes. What would you do? I think I would go back to the past. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see some additional like unspoken, unseen aspects of history that we can't just easily flip into a book on or find via you know, a good, quick Google search or Wikipedia search and actually be there present in the moment, some of those big game-changing moments of, of time. Yeah, I think I would be the same way. I don't think I would want to spoil the future yeah. by going to the future. Instead, I would want to yeah see some of those historical aspects or even just go relive yeah. some moments of my life. I feel like I've forgotten a lot of little details. So just be fun to go back and relive things. Very much so. I couldn't agree with you more. Okay. I love that. I love a good fun question. <laughs> awesome. Glad I could provide that to you. And I'm really looking <laughs> forward to whoever, whoever you have next and seeing what their answer is. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, Adam, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. This is such a fun conversation. And I, I think it's just going to be very valuable for our audience to hear about a different unique model there that you have at Syracuse University. So thank you for taking the time to share your knowledge. No, thank you. I do appreciate this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been glad to have you. It's been great. And uh, I just hope you have a good rest of your week. That's all for this episode of Career Everywhere. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit subscribe and rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next time.